Lord, I'm thankful. I tell you, God's good to us. Amen. Been better to us all than we deserve for sure. Amen. Amen. Thankful for His goodness, His mercy, His grace, His salvation. Uh, just so many things we can be thankful for. And that's one of the things I love about this week. I, you know, I work in retail and, and, uh, we, and, and I want to sell through all my Christmas stuff just as quick as I can. Not because uh, I want to get rid of it, but I want to celebrate Thanksgiving first. Amen. I believe in Thanksgiving first. We'll be thankful for what God has done for us. We've forgotten about Thanksgiving. Uh, everybody celebrates uh, the Devil's Day, Halloween, and then we turn around and, I mean, just no sooner get that day behind us and we start looking towards Christmas. And I understand that that's the world of retail, but I miss th the Thanksgiving. Amen. I like Thanksgiving. And we ought to be grateful. And uh, speaking of that, I'm excited about our service Tuesday night. I always love that opportunity for us to come and tell what God, how, because we all know God's been good to us, amen, but to share it, just like with Brother Billy sharing that this morning with us and how the Lord blessed him with that good report, that encourages me, that helps me, and I know it does you too. So I'm excited about the service Tuesday evening and looking forward to what is known as the world of rush from Black Friday on to Christmas, amen. There will not be an empty evening for anybody, probably not. We'll be busy, but I am excited about this time of the year. I love it, and bless the Lord for it. If you have your Bibles, turn with us this morning to Proverbs chapter number 29, verse 18, a very familiar passage of Scripture. This is a springboard verse that will lead us into, uh, I believe it is, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, but we'll start here in, in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. We've been talking, we've been teaching a series of lessons on the church. And uh, we started out there in the book of Acts and, and uh, actually started out in the, in, uh, in the book of Matthew, started about how the Lord said, I will build my church. Then we went over into the book of Acts and spent some time there. And we just took several different passages of Scripture and tried to give those so that it would encourage us about the church and the work of the church. Well, today we want to talk about the vision of the church. Where is the vision of the church? Where is the vision? Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. Before we begin to read God's precious and holy word, let's take just a moment and pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to be back in your house this morning, Lord. We thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, thank you that we're all able to get together one more Sunday on this side of eternity as a family. We thank you, Lord, for each and every one that's here. Thank you for our church, Lord. Thank you for our pastor. Thank you for how you've loved us, how you've encouraged us. Thank you for his family. Pray, Father, that you'll just guide and direct in this service this morning and the next as well. Help us, Lord, to hear from heaven as the word of God is read and it's given. Father, I pray that you'll speak to us. I pray that the, all the care, the trial, the trouble, the, the discouragement, the uh, just the frustration that may be on our minds this morning, Lord, that it will be set to the side and we'll listen to the sweet Holy Spirit of God as He tries to help us and guide us and direct us. We need you today. Bless in this service. Bless in the next service. Pray that each and everything said and done bring praise and honor and glory to Thee. Help us put our focus on You and we'll thank You and we'll praise You for we ask in Jesus' name. And amen. Proverbs chapter number 29 and verse number 18. You're all very familiar with this passage of Scripture, this, this one verse. The Bible says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. You know, I, um, when I prayed, I prayed that the Lord would take the Word of God and speak to our hearts. And I say that because last Sunday morning, when I, we were still here on time, our pastor preached out of Acts, and he, he preached on that passage of Scripture where King Agrippa said, I think myself happy. And that verse has stuck with me all week. Now, I, I remember the message, I, and Wednesday night's message, again, was a tremendous message. Every, every message we, we have here at uh, Pax Branch Baptist Church is a help and an encouragement to us. But, I, you know, I can't remember everything that was said Sunday morning, but I remember that verse, I think myself happy. And that verse ties to this verse. Look what the verse says there. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, what? Happy is he. So there's a couple of things here, but we won't get into, we won't get, we, we won't get into all that. That's where I wanted to go this, this morning was to, to that verse 
but I didn't want to redive or dive back into that same passage of scripture that he preached last Sunday morning. Um, but I thought about that because you know what? You know why people do some of the things they do? Because they're not happy. You know why people talk about other people? Because they're not happy. You know why people backbite other people? Because they're not happy. They're not happy with themselves. They're not happy, period. And so they try to bring everybody down to their level. You know why we're miserable as Christians sometimes? Because we're not happy. We're not happy in the Lord. And we're not happy in the Lord. You know why? Because we're not keeping His Word. It says right there in that verse, a servant will not, I'm sorry, where there's no vision of people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. If we're keeping his word, we'll be happy. Amen? We'll be happy because we're serving our Savior. We're serving him. Now, it all this ties together, so bear with me. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but the he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Who are those that are to be, to have the vision? Who are those that are to be happy in the Lord? Well, those that are saved by the grace of God, the body of Christ, our fellow church believers, amen, our fellow church members. And just because you've signed a piece of paper, just because you've been sprinkled, just because of this, that, and the other, doesn't make you a church member. You're a church member because you're saved by the grace of God. You're, you're, you're a church member of the body of Christ. That makes you a member of the church, amen, that, and of course the things that our church the, the baptism and 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 those are symbols to the to the local body of believers, but not to the church being a body of Christ. We're saved, and through this series of lessons that we've been going through through the book of uh, through the book of Acts and there in Matthew and and in other passages of Scripture, we've been reviewing our responsibilities and our purpose for the church. And these lessons have led us through many different passage of scripture but I think today it all kind of boils down to one thing we talked last week about living a spirit filled life didn't we we talked about that passage of scripture there in first Thessalonians chapter 5 and and how we're to live that life for the Lord and how if we do that that will keep a lot of frustration a lot of anxiety a lot of grief a lot of discouragement and division out of the house of God amen well, this week, that kind of is along the same lines, but it helps us to see the flip side of that coin. We, we talked about last week rowing together. We talked about last week that we, all have this, we should all have the same goal and the same mindset. And I believe that's very important, but I think it all starts with this. Ties back to the Old Testament, but comes back into the New Testament. So listen to this verse. Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. If you do that one thing, everything else will fall into place. Everything we talked about last week will fall into place. Everything we've talked about the church being in unity, the church going in one direction, the church rowing together, all of that and having the vision that the Lord would have us to have will all be easier if we'll just love the Lord our God. So you see, it comes down to a successful church. It doesn't matter whose name is on the sign. What it matters is how am I living my life? Amen. How am I living my life? You look at, we look at churches around in these great, in this great country we live, and we said, "Well, that's a great church. What makes that church great? Because it has many members. What makes that church great? Because they have four hundred buses they run every Sunday. What makes that church great? Because they have a college, they have a school. What makes that church great? Because they have missionaries. What makes a great church? I submit to you this morning: a church is a great church because they love the Lord their God with all their heart." So see, it doesn't come down to a leader where there's no vision, the people perish. We know that. That's a truth. Amen. Would you agree with me there? Where there's no vision, the people perish. We, we understand that. But we also understand this morning that it's up to us as individuals. Amen. Did you know, and this is, this is nothing. I mean, put your ear plugs on, Pastor. This is not directed at you. But did you know 
that the pastor can't preach and run the sound at the same time. It's hard to do. Did you know that it's, it's difficult for the pastor to preach and teach Sunday school? It is. Say, so how you know? Because I did. I was the opener, the Sunday school teacher. Then I was the song leader, the devotion giver, and the past and the preacher. And it's, it's hard to do. you got to switch gears. It's just difficult. It takes all of us working in one direction. What makes a great church? People loving the Lord. People serving the Lord. If I love the Lord, guess what? I'm not going to have issues with you. You know why? I'm going to let the Lord take care of you. Because I, I can't. I, I can barely take care of me. That's Brother Bill. He'll tell you. Amen, Brother Bill. Say amen. Shout. Raise your hand up here in victory. That's right. I have a hard time keeping control of old dad, let alone anybody else. I'm going to let the Lord take care of you. Amen. You know why? why? I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at him who's all together lovely. So we're talking about vision this morning. But I think it all starts with us individually loving the Lord, our God, with all of our heart. Us. Me. Just think if we all were loving the Lord the way we should, how, how much more impactful we would be serving the Lord. Because you know what? I'm not serving the Lord for my pastor. I'm not serving the Lord for my husband, for my wife. I'm serving the Lord because I love Him. Amen. Now, follow me just for a second. I read my Bible. Why? Because I love Him. I pray. Why? Because I love Him. Now, you've got to admit this morning, if you're praying and you're reading your Bible, you're probably going to be walking closer to the Lord. Amen? So if you're walking closer to the Lord, you're going to love the Lord. And the more you love the Lord, the less time you've got for gossip. I heard a groan. Mm, it's probably me. <laughs> Amen. you got less room for that. So it all starts, last week's lesson, this week's lesson, all starts in Deuteronomy. But it doesn't end there. It goes to Matthew. And it ties in over in Matthew chapter 22, where the disciples said, Master... Which is the greatest commandment in the law? Is it thou shalt not steal? Thou shalt not commit adultery? Thou shalt not this, that, or the other? Have grave enemies? What is the greatest commandment? And he says, thou shalt, and this is the Son of God speaking, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. All thy heart. When we're loving Him with all of our heart, everything else falls into place. Everything else falls. My relationship with my wife falls into place where it should be. My relationship with my children falls into place where it should be. My relationship in the church, in the house of God, in my service with the Lord, all of it falls into place. Why? Because I'm loving the Lord thy God with all my heart. Not half a heart. Amen you imagine if I just loved my wife with half my heart? I told her before we got married, there are certain prerequisites. Number one, you got to be a Steelers fan. Number two, you got to be a Mountaineers fan. Number three, you better like the Braves. I mean, I told her. Of course, she, she did that as the pastor preached on Wednesday. She submitted to those things. Boy, I tell you, you talk about conversation on the way home. That message really, mercy, Wednesday night, I'm telling you what's the truth. We discussed that all the way to the house, amen. I was glad I got up and had to go to work the next morning. Good message. Bless the Lord for it. And it helped me. I love my wife with all my heart. But I'm to love the Lord. And when I do that, everything else falls into place. Do you know I'll be a better worker if I love the Lord my God with all my heart? I'll be a better student. Jacob, Caleb, Sambo. I see you back there looking at me. We'll be a better student if we love the Lord our God with all our heart. It all falls into place. So the Lord told him, said, well, it's to love the Lord our God with all thy heart. So therein, he says, in the last part of verse 40, that on these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Which one? To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and love thy neighbor as thyself. On those two things, loving God and loving others, 
I can hang everything else on that. Now that's what the Lord said. He said that if I'll do those two things, everything else, I believe everything else will fall into place. The love of the Lord with all my heart. If we do that, we talked about spirit-filled life. We, 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 I, I think about this. Imagine how strong our church would be if we loved the Lord God with all our heart. Amen? Imagine how great a testimony, how great a witness, how great an impact we can have in the community if we love the Lord God, God with all our heart. Imagine how many, think about this. Imagine how many pastors, how many evangelists, how many missionaries would still be serving the Lord if they love the Lord thy God with all their heart. Imagine how many churches would still be united and not divided and splinters if they love the Lord thy God with all their heart. I don't know if it's true. They tell me there's a church in South Carolina that has orange carpet on one side for the Clemson Tigers and scarlet red on the other side for the Gamecocks. I don't know if that's true or not. That's what they tell me. I don't know. I've never been there. But that's divided. Amen? And that's the emphasis on the wrong thing. Now, it's a very strong emphasis on me and my wife. Amen? To be a, a Mountaineer fan and a Steeler fan. I mean, that's just imperative. She has to learn the starting lineup before every season starts. I'm teasing. She, she, does. she already knows. Amen? She gets a little confused on the calls sometimes. And Jacob clarifies that for all of us. But we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart. And if we do that, can you imagine how great we'd be as a church? Why? Because we're being great Christians together. You realize how easy it'd be to be in unity if we love the Lord God with all our heart. So again, this is just one aspect of the lesson this morning. I want to give that to you because I thought that, was, that, that helped me. So we're reminded that those that... that that this church is made up, as the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Chapter 12, verse 12 says, For as the body is one, which is the body of Christ, it hath many members. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we Jews, Gentiles, whether we bond, free, whether we've all been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. We're many, but we're one. How can we be one? How can we be one? How can we be unified? Well, I believe it all starts with loving the Lord thy God with all our heart. If we do that, everything else will fall into place. Amen? All right. Okay, so we're together. At least three of us are. Amen? And in order for us to be a church on fire for the Lord... And for us to be a church in unity and a church to go forward, a church to do what God has to do, everyone has to do their job. I can't be spiritual for you. You can't be spiritual for me. There's days I wish you were spiritual for me. There's days I, I would hope that you're praying for me because I need prayer. You need prayer. We all need it, don't we? Different aspects of our life. Maybe it's struggles, maybe it's trials, maybe it's tribulations, maybe it's frustrations. Maybe it's just making decisions. Maybe it's just you know, being, in, being able to do and say the right thing sometimes. We all need those prayers, don't we? We should be praying for one another. And if we're loving the Lord, our God, with all our heart, everything else falls into place. But we must be reminded, I think, too, that as the body of Christ, you think about the body, there are some hands, there's some fingers, there's some feet, there's some toes. There's some, there's some aspects of your body that you know, people will never ever see, but there's aspects of our body that every aspect is needed to do the work for the Lord. Every aspect. I don't know too much about the human body. My wife can tell you she talks to me in a foreign language whenever she tells me about what goes on at work. I have no idea. She used words the other day. I didn't know you could, I didn't know that even how you could spell something like that together, but she's trying to explain something to me, and she's serious. Well, first of all, I don't comprehend a. I know, understand what she's saying. But I listen, and I nod my head, and I say, boy, isn't that something? I don't know what she's talking about, but it's something, all right. Hey, I'm impressed that she can even say that word. Amen? But there's things about the body that these ladies know that we don't know. But everything must work together. All the hands, 
The fingers work together with the feet, the hands, the legs, the arms. All of it works together. We may be many members, but we're all one body. Amen? Now, notice with me a couple of things because we've got to move quick. Number one, I believe in order for us to do the work of the Lord and to have a vision for the Lord and do what God would have us to do as a church, the very first thing is we must love the Lord our God with all our heart. That's first. You do that, there's unity. You do that, we're going in the right direction, all going in the same direction. Why? Because we're going in the direction of Him. You know where we get messed up as churches many times across our great land? We get messed up because there's too many visions. I think we should be doing it. That's the problem. You need to get eye out of it. Amen. It's not about I. It's not about me. It's about him. Now, I don't think anybody here would question the love I have in my heart for our pastor. Because he's my son. I love him in that manner. I love him and respect him as the man of God for the church. Doesn't matter if he has a doctor before his name or 15 letters after his last name. It's who God put here. Amen? And I say this with all due respect. It's not about his vision. It's about God's vision. I can say that because he knows, I know, and you know, I love him. But you know what? He'd tell you the same thing. It's not about me. It's not about him. It's about him. Capital H I M for those that are listening by way of C D. That's H I M with a capital H. It's all about Him who's all together lovely. That's what it's about. That's where our vision needs to be. To determine the vision, we must be reminded that we're not to determine what God will is, but just to do it. You're not to determine what God's will is for your life. God will do that, amen. We're not to determine what God's will is for the church. God will do that. Amen. God has a plan. Hey, there's no doubt in my mind. It's like he said, I think it was maybe Wednesday night. He talked about this little church alongside the road out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you, you'd have, you have to look to find our church. Amen. But look at what God has blessed us with. Look at the people that are here. What a blessing. Then you look at the facilities God has given us. God has blessed the church beyond measure. Amen. God's done great things here. But you know, God's not finished. God wants to do even greater things. What are those things? I don't know, but He does. But you know what I'm supposed to do? I'm supposed to continue doing what I know I'm supposed to do. At work, I have a work list, things I gotta do every day. If I go in, the work list is different than if I go in as, if I go in as an opener, than if I go in as a guy that's a midder, mid midday guy. If I go in as a closer, it's different from the daily responsibilities I have as an opener. There's just different things you got to do. But I have, I have responsibilities. That if I don't do those things, somebody else is going to have to do them, and it's going to make their load heavier and harder. Same way in the church house. We all have a responsibility. You know what our number one responsibility is? I can tell you, this is one thing I can tell you is your responsibility, and be right in saying so. Your number one responsibility is to love the Lord your God with all your heart. Everything else will fall into place. Amen? So the first vision that we must have in order to have the right vision is to love the Lord, our God, with all our heart. Be faithful in service. Not what we think is a good idea, but following what God would have us to do. A vision to be faithful in carrying out God's will in the church. You would talk about the vision. What is a vision? Well, visions could be to some people eating bad food the night before and having a vision. That could be a vision or a bad dream or a nightmare. Amen. But a real vision is found in the fundamentals and the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God. That's where our vision comes from. It's not going to be like, it's not going to be like, not, we're not going to get that Emmaus Road Saul vision. We're going to be struck down by a light or a UFO or anything else. The vision that God has for the church of today is found in these 66 books. That's where our vision is. Teaching and preaching and standing upon firmly upon the Word of God. Amen. Of course, that kind of gets ahead in the Sunday school lesson, but that's all right. I think we got to have a vision of the Word of God, but we also need to have a vision of who Christ is. And what was His purpose? What was the Lord's purpose? To seek and to save those that are lost. 
Some churches would have you to believe that the purpose of the local church is to build bigger buildings. That's not the purpose of the church. Now that might be a result of what God's true purpose is. And that's okay. We never, that should never be our focus. You always tell us about Christ. Well, when you're 75% full, you need to build. Okay, well, what's 75% full? Is that when you go, I can put 12 on this row, 12 on that row. Is that how I count that? I don't know how to count that. But here's what I know to do. I'm just going to be faithful in what God has us to do, have faithful in what I need to do as a Sunday school teacher, be faithful as a song leader, be faithful as a witness, be faithful in what responsibilities God has given me, and let God do the rest. Amen. Amen. Let God do the rest. It's up to the Lord to build the church. It's His church. It's not my church. It's not our pastor's church. It's not your church. It's His church. Amen. Vision of who Christ is. We 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 get a we we seem to get tend to get our eyes off of who the Lord is. We need to have a vision from the Word of God, which we've already talked about. That's where I said I got ahead of my Sunday school lesson. We need to do that. We also need to have a, a love for souls and hope and pray and seek those that are lost to see that they get saved and start going to the house of God. That should be part of our mission. Why? Because that was what was near and dear to the heart of the Lord. But again, what's that all go back to? To love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. Once this is right, everything else will be right. Amen? So it all starts here. A vision of prayer. We've talked about that before. Praying one for another. Praying for the lost, the sick, and praying for each other. Praying for our nation. Je- Jeremiah 33 3 gives us a verse that says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. We will pray right when this relationship is right. If we love him the way we're supposed to love him, everything else will fall into place. Amen. Yeah, I'm almost done. The vision of not only praying, but to have a vision of witnessing to one to, to those that are lost and undone without Jesus Christ. You know, it's it's amazing to me. I, I understand my responsibilities as a uh, as an employer of a of a business in town. I understand my responsibilities there, but it amazes me how people will watch every area and aspect of your life. And they know that you're a believer. They know that you're a child of God. And then they'll they'll come up to you and start talking to you about the Lord. Or you'll see other people that are lost and undone without the Lord. They'll come up to you and say, you know, I'm not going to use that kind of language because I'm in front of you. Well, don't do it because you're in front of me. Do it because the Lord's here with us. Amen. That's, That's why we don't do what we do, number one. But it amazes me how people see those things in our life. Now, I know you go to church. Now, I know, you, I know you go to church and you're religious and da-da-da-da. Well, how do you know that? They know that because of the way we live our life. Amen? But just think about how much brighter our light would be. Let our light shine before me. How much brighter our light would be if we truly love the Lord the way we're supposed to love the Lord. Amen? I tease my wife a lot. You probably know that. My mom and dad came down, and we first got married, and they wanted to come to uh, Chris's mom's house for Christmas. So I said, well, it's easy. When you get off the interstate, just pull over the side of the road and look up. It looks like Atlanta airfield because of all the Christmas lights. I mean, she decorates everything. If there's a stump in the yard, it gets decorated. There's Christmas lights everywhere. AEP sends her a Christmas card and thanks her for her business. Am I right, Chris? Say amen. Shout, do something. She decorates everything. If all the power went off in packs, she could light up Beckley. So much Christmas shit. And I'm not, I'm not even halfway teasing. I've helped her put it up before. I know how much, and it all goes in a certain place. I know that too. You, poor Jerry has to put it all, <laughs> he has to get out every year and put it up. Amen. I feel sorry for him. I love him to death. I feel sorry for him. It's a lot of stuff because it all goes certain places. But think about that. I told them they could find her place by getting off the side of the road and seeing how well it lit up the area. Wouldn't that be good if that's the way we were as Christians? 
Yeah, the lights are on at Lowe's when I go to work. But you know what light needs to be on when I go to work? It's the light of Jesus Christ. That's the light that needs to shine the brightest. And I'm going to tell you something about that light. When it's shining bright, it'll drive out the rats. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, there's people that's going to come after you because they don't like the fact you're a Christian, number one. Amen? You know that. I know that. They're going to come after you. They're going to try to tear you down. Why are they going to try to tear you down? Because they don't have the love of Jesus in them. Amen? It goes back to what we said in the first beginning of the lesson this morning. We probably wouldn't be as quick to talk about one another, discourage one another, hinder one another if we was truly in love with the Lord. Want a vision? The church, I give you several here. A vision to pray, a vision to witness, a vision to read our Bible, a vision to do what God would have to do. Just the basic fundamentals. But it all starts with loving the Lord with all of our heart. Want to be a great church? Yes. Is a great church in numbers? No. Is a great church in buildings? No. A great church is a church that loves the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Amen. I'm teasing. But where are our priorities? If our priorities are where they're supposed to be, we'll be serving the Lord and doing what God would have us to do. What's more important, Brother Mark, the banana pudding or serving the Lord? Without a doubt, it's serving the Lord. Doing what God would have us to do. You can always make the banana pudding the night before. <laughs> Amen. But serving the Lord. Vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. It's the pastor's fault. No, it's my fault. Because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Because I'm not serving the Lord. Because I'm not faithful. I don't pray. I don't read my Bible. I don't do those things. How can I give him, the pastor, my all if I'm not giving him my all? Amen. Let's pray. Our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, thank you for the Scripture. Thank you for the Word of God. Thank you for your, how you help us, you encourage us, you strengthen us, Lord. And what, a, what an awesome responsibility that all of us have to serve you and do what you would have us to do. Father, I don't think we realize today the impact we have upon other people that come in and out of our life. I don't think we realize, Father, the impact that we could have and should be having for you. I think a lot of it is because we don't realize, Lord, we don't love you the way we should. And I ask you, Father, to help me. Uh, I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, you'd help them. But I, I come to you for me this morning, God, that you would help me to love you the way I should love you. Lord, I thank you for my home. I thank you for my family. I thank you for our church. I thank you for our pastor and his family. I pray you'd encourage each one. I pray you'd God direct the next hour. Lead as only you can do. It's only you can have your will and your way, Father. We'll thank you and praise you for us in Jesus' name. Amen.